friends happy I, would, I was about to say happy birthday, but a happy Thursday. <laughs> um, happy Thursday and welcome to the Daily Creative Challenges in Adobe Illustrator. My name is Julia Maselska, like here. Feel free to follow me on social media. I'm very active on Instagram. And um, thanks everyone for joining in the chat. Um, I just jumped off my own uh, YouTube channel and uh, it was a really, really cool stream also. Um, Thank you so much everybody for joining. I'm so, so excited for today's challenge because it's going to be all about creating a die line for a real packaging. We're going to learn how to create a file, a print file for a real packaging. So, so excited about that. We have been uh, wait a saying, I'm sure it's someone's birthday somewhere. Um, yeah, that's true. Um, and yeah, and Henry saying happy Thursday as well. Joseph is saying happy birthday to everyone from Estonia. Yes, happy birthday, friends. Let's just make it our birthday and let's um, uh, make it our creative birthday. We are going to be reborn today um, as a packaging designer. So let's jump into my screen and I would like to share with you guys the Daily Creative Challenge page. Here you will find all the necessary information you need to be able to participate in the daily creative challenges. As you can see, we went through a whole lot of challenges over the past two weeks. And unfortunately, this is, um, this is one of the last challenges that we have together, but no worries. Next week, there will be new challenges unlocked with a new host. So, so excited. Um, Camila is saying, I came as soon as I heard. Very nice. Um, Camila is saying, wait, whose birthday is it? Nobody's birthday. I was just I was just saying instead of happy Thursday, I almost said happy birthday. So um, that's the reason why everybody is wishing each other happy birthday. But that's it's cool. It's fine with me. Uh, there's worse things in life than birthdays. All right. So my friends, today we're going to create a packaging die line for a cosmetic product. I am working on a cosmetic brand, but feel free to do your own and I'm going to show you guys where some resources where to get a die line, die line from because you don't have to build it from scratch you can just um, use um, a die line, die line creator online hi Becca good to see you and Cornell is here um, all the lovely faces Colby's here cool yeah Colby saying I love packaging design me too I am so so into packaging if you look at my table I'll have a lot of stuff going on like a lot of little uh, pieces uh, prototypes and um, like little packages and uh, labels and so on so um, today we're going to create a packaging that will look something like this so just to, like a simple simple box for you to understand how these things work feel free to um, get the dimensions for yourself but um, Let's jump into the starter file so I can show you guys a little bit closer what we're going to be working with today. So if you go on to behance.net slash challenge slash illustrator, you will find the last challenge that's unlocked now. And you can either rewatch this video, which is going to be a replay, or you can get started and you can get that starter file that I have prepared for you guys. And the starter file already has a die line for a gift box, or it can be just any kind of box. Uh, three by three by two inch This die line is not something that I have created myself. I have created uh, this uh, die line from um, temple maker uh, template maker dot and L um, This is um, You're able to use these die lines for commercial use, but you cannot republish these uh, digitally or in print so you cannot um, Say hey, this is my die line. You can you can buy it for five dollars Um but we can use this one here totally for our practice purposes and here i can show you guys temple maker how this looks in action so you can download your own die line and place it into your uh, into your own file so um, for that i'm just going to copy the link that i placed for you guys into the illustrator file and this is how the site looks like uh, template maker and here you will find all the different kinds of boxes and different kinds of things and it's all free for you to modify you can adjust the top diameter bottom diameter height and so on and you will get the die line file, file for that so that's what I got and then I did not only get the die line file 
I also created multiple layers. So as you can see, I have my um, Dylan layer, which consists, let me turn everything else actually off so you can so you can see what exactly that is. So the die line consists of the folding line, the cutting line, and so on, multiple paths. And um, then I have created a bleed. A bleed is something that um, it's basically like a border to which we are going to be designing till um, so that um, the print can go onto that line. So when the cutting process takes place, none of our design will be cut off. We will already have this safe, uh, safe area around our product. And the reason why I did not just use the whole sheet of paper um, as the as the um, as the bleed is because of course every printer wants to save money on print, right? So they will only print until this edge. They will not want to print all this area that will be cut off and thrown into the trash anyway. So, Camilla is saying save the site. Yes, please save the site. Um, Check this out. Um, day eight, one day left. Yeah, TM, this this is so cool. Um, I mean, it's so cool that um, we have done so many projects together and I'm hoping that you guys will have a really nice Behance um, project out of this. Um, all right, yeah, Camila, feel free to create a birthday tea box. I would love to see that in the Discord channel. By the way, guys, to submit your um, your final design of this, um, feel free to go on to bit.ly slash AI Discord. This is where we have our Discord channel. This is where we all communicate. Everybody that who's here from the chat will be there submitting their artwork. And by the way, if you're tuning in from uh, YouTube, make sure to go on to behance.net slash live. This is where I'm reading the chat right now. And this is where you can get um, your answers for your questions that you might have. All right, let's go back to our work screen and let's take a look at the layers. So we do have the die line that we have from this die line creator. Then an extra layer that I have created is the bleed line that goes around the die line and it usually has around uh, 0.125 inches distance. And then I am also creating another layer for spot gloss. The spot gloss layer is for the printer to know where to apply the spot gloss. It can be, um, you know, application on the logo or in a certain part of the packaging or on the whole packaging. So it all depends where you want your spot gloss to be applied. It has to be a vector, um, a vector layer. So you cannot put images in it. You have to put a layer in it. Uh, I mean, a vector in it. And then we do have our artwork. This is where we are placing our design. And this is where I have also placed some type uh, typeface example for you guys. So for now, this is going to be a facial cream that I'm creating. Uh, for the past two weeks, I've been working on a cosmetics brand myself, uh, which is called Glam Up. But you guys feel free to design this box however you like. Uh, feel free to put whatever information you want on it. Um, I would recommend you guys use it as a portfolio piece so you can attract some packaging clients. That's the reason why I would, wanted to encourage you guys kind of to build up these challenges and put it together to a whole Behance project in the end so you can attract branding and packaging clients. And of course, just uh, simply learn how this whole procedure works. So usually when you are going to a printer um, or when you're in touch with a printer and you kind of your client kind of determines what type of packaging you're going to be um, designing for the printer usually will send you a file like this uh, which will contain all these different layers that they need to know so there will be the die line there will be the artwork and there will be the bleed right the bleed line what we want to do is our artwork so our whole complete design everything that we're going to put onto into this file is going to start in the artwork. So any kind of background color, any kind of logo, any kind of text, we are going to put into the artwork layer. So it's very important to have this one clicked. And this is where we see when we can already start designing on where we can already basically can um, go ahead and place our designs. So I'm going into the bleed for a second because I want to copy this, um, this outline here and I want to use it as a framework for my artwork and I'm going back into my artwork and I'm um, holding command shift and V pasting it in place and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a color for my background so I have reversed the fill and the outline and now I have 
I'm still working, by the way, in my artwork, which is really important to kind of have these layers um, sorted out because if I turn off the art, uh, if I turn off the artwork, the only things that should be visible should be the uh, dye line and bleed. Because if you start designing in the bleed or in the dye line layer, um, you will then miss a part of your artwork because the printer will only print the artwork layer, right? And the spot loss layer, but the spot loss is a separate procedure. That's the reason why we have to kind of keep those apart. All right, my friends, hopefully this is uh, easy to understand so far. Uh, Camila, you are so right. And this file is already set up in CMYK. If we go into our color mode, you will see that I have set up the file for you guys in CMYK color already. CMYK is cyan, magenta, yellow, and key, which are the colors that all, all digital printers use. So the regular digital printers use these for, color, for, for colors to create a color combination that will represent the color that you have here. So any kind of color can be recreated out of these four um, color um, pieces. Color, um, color, what would you say? Like key colors. Because, um, because black, which is stands uh, the key, the K stands for key and key is black. Uh, black can give the color, you know, uh, lightness and darkness and C and Y gives it the actual color. So it can be any color of the spectrum. All right. So getting into print here, my friends, if you are just jumping into this, feel free to create yourself a logo uh, for a brand of your choice of your passion. Feel free to use the Livermore script typeface. All you have to do is hold option and copy it. And of course you're working in your artwork so far and you can change the color here by using the eyedropper tool key I. And now you can already place this logo, outline it, command shift and O, right click, arrange, bring to front, and you can already place it into your design, right? So as you can see, as you can see my friends, this is the top part of our box, right? So I should have made one for you guys to, to be able to understand. But this is the type, this is the top part that will basically lock in at the top. It's for you to, to understand how this whole design will work. So basically this design here will be all upside down, right? Because, um, or actually, yeah, in this file, it will all be upside down. So whatever we create on text, up here in this field is going to be around the box, right? Around the box and then the lid will close on top. So this is the lid and everything here will be turned upside down. So now let's start. I'm going to go ahead and use my logo mark that I have been using and it's um, glam up. Glam up. I'm going to reduce the um, the distance here a little bit, the kerning, I'm going to adjust it to zero and I'm going to click Command Shift and O. I'm going to place this on my packaging here on top. As you can see for now, I'm working in black and white because I want to keep it simple, but you guys feel free to use color. I can also use, I mean, I can just use one of my brand colors here. I think that was kind of like a green. Um, I should have saved it to a library. Let's see if I have saved it. Um, no, I don't think I have saved it to, to my library, but it doesn't matter. I can I can just use a, a sample color. I can use this dark blue, let's say. So um, I have just reused a, a brand color from another brand, which uh, <laughs> shouldn't be doing, but uh, don't do this at home. But it's okay. Uh, for now, for education purposes, this will work. I have the logo at the top. So whenever the client takes the, takes the box and they try to open it, Make sure to place the logo that it's well legible and it's not turned around upside down, but it's well legible when they open up the box. Just imagine the way the person will open up the box and the way they will see the information that's on it. So here I will put a little open sign, um, arrange, bring to front, and I will put a little open here, open here. There we go. You don't have to do that, but you could if you wanted to. 
you are the god of this project you can literally decide what you want to do just don't put it too too uh, close to the folding line as you can see the blue lines here are the lines where the packaging will be folded so anything that's too close to the to the line is in danger of you know being folded in into the into the folding line or what you can also do which is i really really like so when somebody just opens the package and the first thing they see on this little piece will be like hi there how are you doing nice to see you all right and we're going to make it bold and we are going to make it uppercase just like that and it's going to be wide as fine there we go typeface sizes should always be um around should always be around eight nine ten at the minimum never go under eight i would not recommend that except if it's caps because if i would not have this in caps it will be way way more complicated to read so let's let me turn off the caps and then you will see the difference from afar it's gonna be pretty difficult to read so i would definitely um keep try and keep the size well legible and for that you guys should make prototypes i always recommend people to um, designers to make prototypes of their designs because that's where you can actually see if your design is well legible or not so um at the moment as you can see i'm just working on the little details it's not very important here but it's a little you know it's a little communication with the client they open the box and you'll be like hi there uh, welcome you know and uh, thanks for purchasing feel free to um, design it your your own but make sure to always keep in mind how the person is you is uh, using the package and again going back to the layers i'm still in the artwork layer i'm going to stay in the artwork layer but what i can do is i can copy with command c and go into my spot gloss layer and command shift and v my logo into the spot gloss layer so that the printer knows that I will have a spot gloss layer, that I will have my logo in spot gloss. And important thing, go back to your artwork and keep on designing. All right, now what I'm going to do is I am going to write that it is a face cream. Uh, face cream. And the face cream is going to um, go onto the front side, so we will have to flip it. I'm going to use this type of um, this size of typeface and I'm going to make it in caps like so face cream face cream command shift and oh I'm always outlining my typefaces because um, or actually I should have made a copy before guys make a copy holding option pull it down make a copy and then command shift and O, outline it turn around and place it so thinking about this thinking about this where is our front side where is our back side what is what is exactly the composition of this box oh actually you know what i'm just seeing that this packaging is actually uh okay so this is the front side this is the front side of our box and this is actually where i can also put some information so i'm going to arrange bring to front so this is where the client actually opens the box, right? So they go like, like that, and they will be able to grab the top from here, right? Because this will be connecting here. This will be the top of the front. And I'm going to put this here. And I'm going to put a little information like ounces. So how many ounces will this be? Maybe two, two ounces or this is just an example, 25 milliliters. I honestly don't know how much this is going to be. Again, command shift and O, outline this. Make this tiny, make this small. And I'm going to put this in the front as well, along with the description of the product. Face cream. Make, make this a little bit smaller, just like so. Okay um all right so let's make sure that this is aligned in the center what i can do for that is i can create a little rectangle that i can place like this and now i can align my little text here and my facial cream to the rectangle making the rectangle the key object because we want everything else to align 
along the lines of the key object. And now I'm clicking the, I'm using the align, um, horizontal align center, just like so. And now all of our objects are aligned to this rectangle. We can remove it now. It was just for us for orientation purposes. All right, now I'm going to copy the same thing and I'm going to place this upside down on the back side of my cream side, cream packaging, just like so. And I'm going to place it pretty much central like this and my milliliters I'm going to place just a little bit lower like that. And here we can have a, like a text, ingredients, something, you know, some information. Um, let's see, I'm just going to Google cream ingredients. And I'm just going to, uh, oops, cream is there. Da, 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 da. Okay, I'm just going to copy this from Wikipedia, which is not, which is not really making sense, but um, I'm going to use that instead of Alorum Ipsum because any example text is better than lorem ipsum. And for that, I'm going to use uh, non-caps. So I'm going to turn off the caps and I'm going to use my tracking at zero and I'm going to reduce the size by a lot. I'm going to go down onto, uh, up to 10 points, 10 point, and I'm going to create a text box that will approximately fit into my into my little side here, right? So I can even go up to nine, I believe here, and I'm going to right click, arrange, bring to front. And now it kind of, I can see that it pretty much fits. I can also use another typeface. I can also use the acumen variable concept, which will be probably even better. And 10 like this and the tracking again at zero. And let's see, this will work as well. Okay, so we have our text and I'm going to outline it and turn it around just like I did with the face cream. Command Shift and O, oops, Command Shift and O. And then I'm going to hold the Shift button and turn around 180 degrees. I'm going to place it in the center. Feel free to align it again. But now I, I kind of ha already have my packaging in place and I'm going to place my logo here again. Glam up, turn it around. As you can see, it's pretty easy to create packaging like this. It's um, it's not a big, um, you know, it's not a lot of work. You just have to have the imagination how things work together and how, you know, how you can create something cool. And now what I like to do is also, I like to create some flows in the packaging so that like the part, the part, the different sides of the packaging get together. For that, what you can do is you can simply use a pencil tool and you go into tool options, set it to smooth, and you can create some like cool lines like that go along the packaging, just like this. And then what I'm going to do with those lines, I am going to make them a color. Oh, actually, let me see what, oh, I am in the spot gloss layer for some reason. Okay, so um, again, Feel free to experiment with color here because I know you guys love to experiment with color and love to do some cool stuff. So let's take a look how this could look like. Bam, this is interesting. I'm going to place this one slightly different. Always make sure that it goes beyond the, the cutting line, the um, bleed, because the bleed will help us to maintain a good quality print. All right, so let me use a white outline here. Um, also feel free to use the blend tool, object, blend, make. And now we're going to go and set our blending options. Smooth color, specified steps. And I'm going to put like 10 steps here and make this almost transparent you know just create some interesting elements in here in our packaging because there is a lot of white space here uh, but now that we have this you know lines going on here <clears throat> makes it interesting all right my friends since this is white color it's not going to be printed anyway so you can either create a clipping mask for this if not hmm, won't be printed anyway but here you already see a, a ready design ready for print with spot gloss on top and um, 
All right, so let me turn off all the layers to show you how this will look. So this is a letter size paper. You can print it in your home, in your home print, on your home printer. Cut it out along the, along the cutting line. And um, I am really, really excited to see what you guys will come up with. So this is basically how a printer will print it. They would not use any of these other layers, but they will look at it, um, you know, to understand where the design goes and so on. And they have specific machines that will cut out the exact size out of this specific sh sheet size. So let's say they're printing it on a letter size sheet. Um, they will be able to create a, a cutting um, piece that will cut out the exact uh, shape of your packaging. That's the reason why uh, why you need to cr create a bleed just in case the machine is a uh, you know slightly shifting or not perfect. Not no machine is perfect ever, but um, so if the machine is slightly uh, shifting, your packaging design is still on point and it will still look good. All right, my friends. Now how to how to export this file for the printer. Of course, the important thing is to have it in CMYK mode, which is already set up. If it's if it's an RGB, set it to CMYK mode. Then what I do is I save it as a copy and I save it save it as a PDF. I save it, save it as a PDF, but for today's purposes, for today's purposes, we are going to export it as a JPEG so that we can share it in our Discord channel. So I'm going to export it as a JPEG on my desktop and it doesn't have to be CMYK, it, has, it can be RGB. So you can feel free to export an RGB for, for um, display. Um, and please share it in our Discord channel, bit.ly slash AI Discord. And I'm looking forward to see your guys' submissions. Hopefully this was helpful. Feel free to rewatch this. Thank you so much for joining everyone and I'll see you tomorrow. And have a great, happy birthday. Bye-bye.